everyone, welcome back to my channel, my name is Anna, and today I will be doing my, my March wrap up. Let's get going. I feel like I have read a lot of books, I think I read like 6 in total, maybe 7, something like that, so it's still pretty good. I did complete one book for my TBR and it was really enjoyable, so let's go see. So my first book was Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Canas, and this is well as the daughter of a legend 1840s Mexico, Nina knows a thing or two about monsters. Her home has long been threatened by tensions with Angola settlers from the north, but something more sinister looks near the mansion like something that drains men of their blood or leaves them for dead. So I gave this a 3 stars. Um, I'm not really a fan of vampire books. Uh, just because it can be so cringy, I'm looking at you Twilight. I'm sorry, I had to, but Twilight is just not it. Sure, I was obsessed with it when I was a kid, but I cringed myself back then. <laughs> but yeah, um, it wasn't bad though. I think the story didn't have more of the creepiness. I want a more creepy atmosphere. Like, we're dealing with something supernatural, so I want more creepiness. So what is it? Um, and, you know, more vampires, because it literally says vampires of El Norte, so... Well, the vampires! I think the story sometimes fell out, out of balance and it felt like the story was also repetitive. At times, the romance was okay, but I wish there was more action instead of the romance because the romance literally took up half of the book. Which, I mean, it was alright. I didn't mind the romance, but I just wanted more action instead. And then, the characters seem to be okay, but most of the time they actually discuss certain things over and over again in just different words, so I'm like, what's the point of having this? I mean, it's, a, it's like the same conversation again, so I don't really get that. Um, I also think the book should have focused more on the herbal and healing magical hun. I think that was really cool what she had done, so I wanted to more know about it, like, rather than hearing about the lore behind the magical hums. It was so fun to read about it, but I just want more of the magical hums to be in action. So, I don't think it was a bad book, I just think it need, just needed more creepiness, and more vampires, and more action. A lot of action took place at, like towards the end of the book, like the final showdown. So, and I would just wish it was just well more balanced in the end, but it, was, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't really. My next book was Technically Yours by Denise Williams. Seven years ago, he fell in love with a stranger. And he couldn't have today. She's back in his life and the sparks between them threatened to set her career on fire. And boy, then it's set it on fire. Woo! We got Elijah as hell hated his book, so it definitely set a fire for me. But, so I give it 2.5 stars. Maybe I was generous that day, but the more I think about it, I think I shouldn't have given it 2 stars, because, yeah, it was, I just hated it. I'm sorry. I, I know, I hate a lot of things, but, I like, I don't really like the characters at all, but they weren't really that bad either. It's just some of the actions they can do doesn't really make sense, and... They're pretty dumb, so I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, regardless, they, you know, they're just, eh, they're okay. I found the story to be boring, and the women didn't have any chemistry. I was just really bored with them, to be honest. Like, I just could not stand the women, so I just, I'm not so... And I'm just like, no, thank you, thank you, next. <laughs> I also don't think that some of the stuff they did was professional, since the relationship almost got exposed. I noticed this scene, like, why would you do it at your job instead of your home or something? Like, that was just bizarre. Like, they had those items and they had to do it. So, I don't know. That was just weird. I'm not thinking about sex, but it was another thing. I also didn't really like the time job because it just made it harder to know what was going on. I just don't think, and I just don't think there were high stakes in the book for me to care about. But... You know, none for less, um, I still think that the beginning was honestly promising. It really did start it off strong, but I don't know what happened throughout the book. It just fell flat later on. And so, yeah, I just, this is my last romance, my first and last romance. I'm sorry, but I cannot handle the romance genre. It's just so cringy. I'm sorry. My next book is probably the weirdest book. I've read so many weird books lately, but... 
This one is hired by Katrina Lino. Following her father's death, Jane North Robinson and her mom moved from sunny California to the dreary, dispiral-painted old house in Maine, where her mother grew up. All they want is a fresh start, but behind North Manor's doors look a history that leaves them feeling more alone and more tormented. I gave it 3.5. It was, as I said, it was a weird book. It really was fun to the characters, but they never just so weird, especially Maine. Um, main character who actually has it. I didn't know this, but I, w I thought it was just a habit or something. But she actually has a disorder, pica, pica, p i c a. Uh, I actually don't know what that is, but I'll put it up here if you guys want to know more. So that was interesting, and I'm not sure. Like I actually don't know what to think about the ending. I felt like it was too rushed and abrupt almost. It was just a weird ending. I don't think I haven't read something like that in a while, so... I don't know, well maybe actually, so Let Them Burn, I think that was also the real book I had read, so... They, those two come, come close. <laughs> and I wish I had, and the book had more horror to it. The atmosphere was good. I really did enjoy the atmosphere and the settings and the town. I just want more, more of it. I want more of the creepiness and the horror. I want, I want the spooky stuff. So, especially the house, like the house was supposed to be haunted, but it just left me questioning things, so it wasn't really spooky. Um, I did feel a bit bored of the story most of the time, even though I did think the build up was really good, but then just felt flat after. The characters was also interesting, but I think Jane should have figured things out more on her own. Um, regardless, I think the mystery could have been better, and I wish the characters were more fleshed out just because they really were quite interesting. I wanted to know, know more about them. So, yeah, it, was, it, was, it wasn't bad book though, it was just weird. <laughs> so, I still enjoyed it personally. So my next book is actually a manga. It's volume 1. I didn't realize there was more, but this is volume 1. Off the Horizon by J.H. Jung Ji Hyun. This is a world where everything has been lost, a girl and a boy all known together. All they can do is move forward but against broken adults and devastating despair, how long will they be able to keep going? Oh, this book, this book actually made me team up a bit, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so I even five stars. I love the art, I love the story, and you know, and the book honestly just told us to appreciate life and you know, be kind to one another because life is too short, you know, like, look what's happening right now in the real world. So, you know, life's too short, go out, have fun. You know, you never know, so just go out. <laughs> so yeah, it was just an emotional book, and as I said, just to appreciate life and cherish the ones you love. And I did like the art, as I said before. I think they were stunning, and they were really so pretty. The manga leads to hope and darkness as the infection and the disease had spread. And like, this is like the apocalypse of the infection, and you know, and just kind of killed off everyone except for those two little ones. So it was really heart-wrenching to see what they had to go through. Uh, the main characters were holding on to hope the entire time and all oh, you know, just be kind. So I think this, uh, uh, this manga had like a really nice message and I hope everyone will read it because I really did love it. So it was really nice to hear read it. And my last book was Mistress by Nadine Blandes. So the month was born with the ability to turn her tears into wishes, but when a granted wish goes wrong, she is cursed. The next year she shares will kill her. She must travel to the world to break the curse before it claims her life. And before the king's military find her, to survive the journey, Mirth must harden her heart to keep herself from crying even a single tear. So I give it a 4 stars. I actually really enjoyed this book. Like, I don't think I have ever read something like this. I really love how the whole thing was just unique. And the magic system was also unique. And honestly, it was just really enjoyable. So I don't think, but it was a little bit slow paced. Um, but it's, it's okay because it does kind of pick up throughout half of the book. I think it's interesting with the magic system and like how it was different and unique. As I said, she had the power to make wishes every time she cries, but because she has been cursed, it will kill her if she shed a tear, so I think that was really fascinating, actually. And it reminded me of Cinderella, actually. Like, since her grandmother used mirth for her selfish needs, and, you know, and she never really taught mirth how to control her powers and how to deal with them. 
So it just gave me Cinderella vibes, though. So. Yeah, it's not a Mito by any means. It's its own story, but it just reminded me of it. I think Bastion was okay. He didn't really thrill me that much, though his power looks really cool. He has, like, a time power, so basically he just snaps his fingers and everything goes still. So I think that was pretty neat. I really liked Rudd, who had more of a personality and charisma than Bastion. I'm not really sure where the world building was going for. Like, the world building was kind of weird. Because apparently, like, this is supposed to be Dutch and sometimes it's supposed to be German. So I'm not sure where was it going because I feel like there was quite a few German words I had saw. But again, sometimes it would just switch to Dutch. So I don't know what's going to happen with that one. Um, but yeah, so I think the pop switch was a bit confusing since Mirth had first person and Bastion had third person. And that was kind of all over the place. Like, when you're doing POV, you should just stick to one. Like, don't have, you know, first person and then later on have third person. They were just confuse the readers. So it's just better to stick with one POV. So if you're gonna do with first person, then go with the first person. For like, for like the whole book, don't just randomly switch. It really will confuse your readers. And so yeah, I think it would have been better to be stuck with the same person. So, again, the first person. But yeah. I think the ending was also interesting, almost. It was still a blip as well, but I don't know if this is going to be a sequel, but I think... I'm hoping it will, because I kind of have ideas as to what's going to happen, but... I don't know, like, the ending was just a lot left to be desired, I feel like. And I'm not sure, so what... Like, what happened to Oma? Oma is Muth's grandmother, she's the one that used Muth. Like, in the beginning, she ran a month man away from Oma because of what she is doing. So, I don't like, what happened to Oma? Did, did Oma ever find Muth? So, I don't know. That was kind of like quite not really unanswered, so I don't know. But I also think the trial should have been more intense and more magical. And it's just, oh, he is a bear, go find it. Like, really? <laughs> I don't know, like, the triad just seems somewhat uh, magical, like, how they described it, so... I was expecting to have that, but it never happened, so I don't know. So, yeah, I think the um, triad should have been more magical. But. So those are all the books I have read for my March wrap up. Let me know what you have read in March, and please like, comment, subscribe, so you'll be notified every time I post, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!